Isn't this fun? Are you having a blast? The true answer to that question differs on who you play or what character you decide to play against. If you play Ness, the only thing more exciting than landing the PK fire is landing the next PK fire. And if you're the player playing against Ness, you're probably mashing your stick to DI out of the PK fire or you're just considering losing all hope. This last feeling is one that many of us feel when fighting against Ness, and it isn't all just because of PK Fire. Ness's entire moveset and playstyle in general has made him become one of the most hated characters by not only the pros, but casual players alike. Ness isn't even top tier, has bad matchups and a lot of weaknesses including explodable recovery, so why is it that this yo-yo flinging kid causes so many problems in the competitive mindset of this game? In this video, we'll discuss everything about Ness that contributes to your burning hatred of him, and we'll also teach you how to beat him. In our question of the day, we'd like to ask you, which of Ness's moves do you hate the most? Be sure to let us know in the comments below, and stay tuned as we talk to you on how to beat those problems that you have with the character. Even if you're a Ness player yourself, we have a lot of resources to teach you things about this game on ProGuys.com. Our in-depth character guides will teach you how to play the entire cast, and our courses will guide you through the fundamentals of the game. We even have exclusive courses taught by some of your favorite players, including MKLeo, Esam, and Zero. Looking to take a more personalized approach? ProGuys has our Play With Pros feature that features a lot of pros that you could play with that you could be able to learn a lot of things about the game, and it'll be only for you. We've also recently launched our live classes that we have on this website on YouTube right here. Be sure to check us out. It's between Monday through Friday from 12 p.m. PST to maybe about 1.30. You could catch me. You could catch one of these of me playing. <laughs> hey, uh, just, just come play. So to understand Ness on a deeper level, let's first break down the character's core attributes. Ness is a floaty character with a very slow fall speed and low gravity. This means that he will spend a lot of time in the air when he jumps and falls down very slowly. Ness also has a very high yet very slow double jump, similar to a few other characters such as Lucas and Mewtwo. Coupled with his floatiness, this jump will be in motion for quite a while. When it comes to airspeed, Ness is pretty average, but he has one of the fastest aerial accelerations in the game. Similarly to characters like Palutena, good aerial acceleration still creates great aerial mobility even without an amazing airspeed. A fast aerial acceleration not only lets the character reach their top speed really quick, but also allows them to change their drift direction more freely. In the case of Ness, all of these variables result in a character who is very tricky to catch in the air. He could be ambiguous with his drift, and his unique double jump requires specific timing to space around. Ness isn't too fast on the ground, but he'll be spending most of the time in the air anyway. Also, Ness is a middleweight character despite his appearance. Having a bit of weight complements his floatiness as well, making him a difficult character to combo. This is because heavier characters receive less hit stun and floater characters get launched higher, creating the formula for characters who can often escape the pursuers in time to get out in action. Speaking of those actions, let's look at Ness's attacks. His arrow kit is one of the most defining factors in his overall gameplay. Each of Ness's arrows have very large hitboxes, especially compared to the size of the character model. His arrows are also disjointed, meaning that the hitbox extends beyond the parts of his body that you can hit. This is particularly apparent with his forward air and up air. A crucial factor about these arrows is that they either have lots of shield stun, like with back air, or multiple hits, like with forward air. These arrows also have pretty low end lag in the air, which complements Ness's floatiness as well. He can even perform two aerials during one short hop. Putting everything together, you have a character who can swing a move and drift away to almost always get another action out before you can reach him. This makes Ness one of the hardest characters to whiff punish and leads him to be a very whiff heavy character. Most characters will need to carefully space their attacks to make sure they cannot be punished during their cooldown or landing lag, but Ness can take advantage of all of his attributes to get away with this. To take a closer look, here's an example. First, Ness whiffs a rising short hop fair drifting towards the opponent. As a quick note, if this fair connects, he could probably combo into a few more for some big damage. The fair is a multi-hit move, so it's active for a while, and during the animation, the Ness retreats. Ness can opt to fast fall and auto-cancel the fair to land with almost no lag, or he can double jump or air dodge before landing. If he double jumps, he can do so with yet another attack, and his double jump height will put him out of range for most characters. From here, Ness has time to do two more arrows of his choosing before he lands. Even though every one of these arrows have some cooldown, Ness's ability to drift in and out of jump so high makes it very difficult to find the right moment and position to punish him. Good Ness players will also understand what the opponent is looking for and choose the best actions accordingly. Ness's arrows aren't just safe, they start combos and kill as well. Fair strings offer Ness some very easy early percent damage and also carry the opponent off stage. Back air is a very powerful and deadly KO option, and up air both KOs and starts combos. 
Neutral Air is also a KO option at higher percents, and its quick 5 frame startup makes it a great combo breaker and out of shield option. Basically, fighting Ness is like trying to catch a cactus in a pinball machine. He's moving all over the place and throwing out dangerous moves at the same time. If it was just his aerials, adapting and counterplaying Ness wouldn't be so hard, but Ness's special moves create many new and threatening possibilities. Ah yes, it's finally time to talk about the PK Fire. As you probably know from victimizing experiences, PK Fire is a projectile that creates a multi-hit burst of flames which upon contact hits its target. When you're trapped in these flames, Ness can attempt a follow-up, potentially into another PK Fire. In neutral, PK Fire acts as a strong deterrent to grounded approaches, as he'll shoot it out straight in front of him. In the air, this move conveniently angles downwards, giving Ness yet another option to prevent you from getting near him without the risk of taking tons of damage. If you do get caught in a PK Fire, you should start wiggling your left stick around the outside of the flames to SDI away. You can add a slight up or down direction to your SDI way depending on your character's fall speed and which part of the fire you're closer to vertically. Ness's down B is Psy Magnet. In addition to absorbing energy-based projectiles to heal Ness, this move offers plenty of mix-ups and it can cancel his double jump. This goes for all of Ness's special moves actually, and makes him even harder to catch. The PSI Magnet also has decent combo potential, linking into many aerials and even grab. Speaking of grab, Ness has a solid grab game to make sure you never feel too comfortable shielding. His down throw starts low percent combos, his forward throw is great for getting opponents off the stage, and his back throw, it's really really strong guys. Don't let him grab you at high percent. Finishing up his special moves, Ness's PK flash isn't too useful, but it is really strong. And then we have his up B, PK Thunder. PK Thunder launches a spherical bolt of lightning from Ness's brain that can be freely controlled by the left stick. If the bolt hits Ness himself, it will launch him away, which is one of his main recovery options. Ness players will often use this as a trap and advantage state though, as the so-called PK Thunder 2 is extremely strong, closing out stocks at 40% or even lower. This is a scary setup, because Ness can use the PK Thunder Ball to juggle and edge guard his opponents. If they dodge the ball, then they may find themselves directly in the path of PK Thunder 2. When used for recovery, the time required to hit Ness as he aims the PK Thunder into himself can be exploited to edge guard him, but if you're late, you'll eat a PK Thunder too, which is often unteckable due to its high knockback. Good Ness players won't use PK Thunder to recover all the time though. Ness and Lucas have the best directional air dodges in the game, letting them travel the distance of some characters' double jumps. So it's basically an intangible third jump, on a character who already has one of the highest double jumps in the game. Edge guarding Ness is supposed to be where you abuse him the most, but it can feel scary and sometimes just not worth it. When you're the one off stage, Ness has some incredibly easy ways to edge guard you. As a character with a somewhat vulnerable recovery, you might think he's not very good at edge guarding, but Ness doesn't even have to go off stage. His PK Thunder will let him chase you wherever you are, and the real threat comes from when you reach the ledge. Ness's up smash and down smash have an active hitbox when they charge, and the developers thought it was a great idea to let the yo yo hang off the stage when Ness uses these moves at the ledge. Ness can simply charge the smash attack and react when an opponent gets hit by the yo yo, conveniently comboing into a completed smash attack. If a character does have great recovery mix ups, Ness basically gets a free charge smash attack edge guard every single time. Ness is a character who can repeatedly swing multiple deadly options without easily being caught, and this ratio of higher danger to lower risk leads many of us to be very frustrated fighting the character. So what can we do to combat Ness? Looking for patterns in neutral is important. Ness relies on opponent running into his hitboxes to find most of his openings, but he doesn't have the most reliable approaches. If you can find a pattern in how the Ness plays in neutral, you can find your opportunity with less hesitation. It's also often a good idea to space your attacks very carefully and often retreating so you don't get whiff punished by the Ness if he drifts out side of your range. You want to try to play very safely until you get Ness off stage, and here you can wait for his air dodge to the ledge and try to punish the lag as he grabs it, or go after Ness during his setup for his up B. If a character has a counter, this could be an excellent way to edge guard his up B recovery as well. All of the factors that make Ness difficult to deal with are exaggerated online as well, as the input lag makes it even harder to react to his whiffs. Best Ness, who is certainly a great player in in real life tournaments, has seen very positive results in recent online events, even winning the box. We hope this video gave you a little bit more insight on things that might lead you to despite fighting Ness. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell to keep up with more from Pro Guides.